Yeah. I know, this is usually not the review that you would expect from me, but the movie was number one at the box office, and I had a friend who wanted to go see it, and I managed to catch it late in the game, and she wanted me to do a review, so... You're welcome. Hello everyone, David here with a bit of a surprise review, but because of the fact that it was a surprise and a very unintentional one, I'm going to keep this review as short as possible due to the fact that I was not, not planning on seeing this movie at all, but I managed to catch it before the weekend was up. And like I said, this was the number one movie at the box office over the weekend. It managed to beat out Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. Tom Cruise. So I wanted to go see what 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 this, this, this blasphemous movie is. He dares to topple the great Tom Cruise in a really good science fiction movie. What is this? And I go into it, and I come out of it, just thinking to myself, like, wow, that was actually kind of a good movie. And I'm talking about the movie The Fault in Our Stars. And if you don't happen to have a Facebook account, the movie is about this girl named Hazel, who's played by Shailene Woodley, who is diagnosed at an, at an early age, around 13 or so, with terminal lung cancer. So in order to support her parents after she's gone, she decides to team up with a classmate in high school to cook the purest f wait, wait a minute. She goes to a support group and falls in love with a guy. And that's her movie. And I know, it sounds very unappealing, like, oh yeah, it's a romantic drama, blah, 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 blah. But I said to myself, okay, it's a drama with stakes in it because the synopsis itself is enough to kind of give the movie away. It's, it's, it's a movie that centers around a couple, they develop a romance, but one of them has cancer. And like I said, with that synopsis alone, you know where the movie's going to end up. And, and you got, if that's not enough to give you an idea of where the movie's going to end up, I have you know these people talking on Facebook and, and, and to me saying, I don't think I'm going to be able to take this movie. I read the book because it's based on a book. and. I, I'm not emotionally prepared to face this. Like it's the like not since freaking Passion of the Christ, where people talking about how they're not gonna be able to go into the theater and witness this thing, and that alone made me go, yeah, I I think I know what's gonna happen. But as a critic, I kept telling myself, okay, despite knowing or at least having a, an idea of how the movie's gonna end and what's gonna happen, I said to myself. If the execution is pulled off well to where it doesn't really matter if I know how the story is going to end, if it's effective and I'm actually touched, like all these people are saying that they're going to be when they go into seeing the movie, then okay, I will give credit where credit is due and I'll say, hey, this movie's good. And I, it turns out that this, actually, this movie's actually kind of good, but not to the extent, at least for me, that others were making it out to be coming out of the theater. I think the most important part to make the execution of this movie well worth your time would have to be your leads and selling the story and making you f care for these characters when you put in such a drastic yet relatable element such as cancer because of the fact that because cancer can happen to literally anybody to so the healthiest person on the planet they can get cancer. So when you throw in that element and you literally put stakes in there of having any of your characters go, and in this particular instance, the, the movie's telling you that it's the girl who you see walking around with her oxygen tank, you really need to depend on these characters to sell the story. And fortunately, Shailene Woodley and the, the male lead's performances I can't remember his name and I feel bad about that because both of their performances really do carry this movie they are charismatic they're great together and they really sold their roles granted there were a couple of instances where I felt like the dude were do was doing certain things that in real life would either not work or would take more effort to work on a girl because he was doing things where in real life I'm like Dude, I mean, he's driving and he's running into things, and and he find the the movie makes it feel like that's charismatic and and witty, like oh look how charming he is. He's running into into trash bins and like, he's just like, whoops, look how cool I am. And I'm like, dude, you're gonna fucking kill somebody. But unlike other movies, thank God it it stops there because for the remainder of this uh, of this movie, this guy does withhold that charismatic uh, personality without having to do 
antics such as that, and really does does let his it lets he lets his personality win us over and make us like the character. And it was very difficult to not get attached to them. Granted, at the end of every scene, I kept reminding myself, "This girl has cancer. This girl has cancer." And the movie periodically would let you know that, "Hey, this character has cancer, so don't get too attached." And I was reacting to this movie after the end of every scene the way people do with Game of Thrones these days where you know don't get attached and for about 75% of this movie is these two talking to one another and dealing with these real world real life yeah scenarios where yeah you know this could happen so it that makes it instantly relatable and the the, the way that they deal with it is real like, there's nothing about it that feels d too much or over the top. I'll admit, you know, every now and then there's a line of dialogue or a, a moment that's a bit too sappy, a little cheesy, a little over-romantic, but it's the good kind where you can't deny that there's, there's certain lines that this dude says to this girl that, yeah, are sappy and cheesy, but you'll be damned you didn't use at least one of those lines on a girl in real life, and you're like, yeah, I, 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 I kind of did that. And where I was really pleasantly surprised was that the movie managed to s surprise me in a particular way. I'm not going to go into it because of spoilers, but let's just say that the outcome is still the same of what I predicted it to be, but there's a particular detail in that outcome that was different than what I had anticipated. And that difference alone made me go, okay. I actually put, put, I like that. And the fact that they still managed to go with that out outcome itself is still pretty ballsy. Because I was actually thinking about this a few weeks ago, almost like a month ago. I don't know, I was in the gym or something, and I was thinking to myself, it's been a while since a romantic movie did something like this. Because I remember there were there was a, well, I don't want to say remember because I make it sound like I was there, but I know that for a fact that there's certain movies that came out in like the 70s or 80s where the ending to those movies were similar to the ending of this movie where, you know, shit happens. Let's put it that way. And I love that because not only did it hit because of, of how you would become invested with these characters and, you hit, and you're hit with this reality check that, hey, not everything is, is uh, a bed of roses or whatever. Um, you know, I love that because it's real, as opposed to so many tamed romantic movies, and of course the one that we always come back to is Twilight. But even then, you're like, you know, the audience has been tamed by all these very tame, very overly sappy movies, like the Nicholas Sparks movies. Every time he, that guy writes a novel, they have to make a movie, and they put it out there, and people just eat that shit up. But I'm so glad that a movie like this comes along and says, you know, they, they pull that Batman. You know, see that meme on, on Facebook with that Batman just slapping Robin. That Batman is this movie it's just slapping the audience in the face saying, nothing is always happy. And just because I wasn't blubbering like a baby by the end of this movie, like an awful lot of people were in the audience, including my friend. There you go, I'm putting you on the spot. Uh... That doesn't mean that I wasn't emotionally touched, because I did feel something for these characters. As hard as I was trying to not get myself attached, it ultimately failed, and I did feel something. I wasn't crying or even tearing up, for that matter, because of the fact that I kind of knew where the story was going. And by now, you probably know too, so it's very hard to talk about this movie without spoiling it or hinting at spoilers. But I was still touched, and like I said, the most important thing for me is that if the execution is done well, then this movie is already automatically good. And I'm, for I'm fortunate enough to say that by the time that the end credits started rolling, I said to myself, this movie did in fact work. I'm telling you, theaters should put Kleenex box like, like a canister with Kleenex boxes on top of the canis canister so that people, are, uh, uh, the people find it easier to dispose of them at the door for every theater that is showing this movie. Just automatically right there. I mean, they got the disp they got the disposable bins for the 3D glasses at the entrance of every 3D movie. Should have a disposable Kleenex dispenser at the oh, at the doors of every theater that is showing this movie. Now, I'm making the movie sound pretty perfect up until this point, but that's simply not the case. I like it is with any movie. But to me, the biggest problem with this movie is 
an entire section because I said 75% of this movie works in, the, in a very natural way. That 25% is this section smack dab in the middle of the movie where our characters take a trip to Amsterdam for particular purposes. And these purposes alone felt a little too much, a little too like... Now how would this happen? I understand that cancer patients get their wish because of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And that, okay, I'm hoping I don't piss some people off, but I might, I might, just, I just might, but I'm just going to voice my opinion. I'm a little mixed on the idea of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Part, like, literally half of me thinks that it is a good idea because some people are terminally ill, so, you know, they, they may never, they may never get another chance. But then the other half feels that, that, you know, that very cynical part of me that says special treatment you know just, like Walter White said you know everybody has a death sentence and cancer is just moving the date that's it but everybody's gonna die eventually God, I, that that scene kept popping up in my head every time they brought, brought up cancer in this movie I kept thinking of of, 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 of Walter White uh, and and what he said in that movie about seizing life because hey you're gonna die no matter what even if you got cancer or not uh, I was thinking of Walter White just popping out of nowhere in this movie, like, Jesse, we have to cook! But yeah, they go to Amsterdam, and the way that it's filmed, it feels just a tad bit manipulative, because, like I said, you know the punch that is coming, so then they have to, you know, ham it up a little bit, and showing how cute these two are together when they're on gondolas, and they're enjoying fi fine food, and they're drinking, and they're having this great time, and you're like, Okay, already. I mean, where are the hookers? It's Amsterdam. Where are the hookers? But do not fret. Leave it to good old Willem Dafoe to come in and bring that entire section down to reality. Because he plays this author that the, our two main leads really admired. And he's the focus uh, as to why they go to Amsterdam. But, man, when he appears on screen, he definitely has a presence. And... He hones in that role very well, even though it's a very, it's a bit of a cliched role, that eccentric author who turns out not to be the way that the, our characters were, were thinking because, uh, you know, how much, because of the way that they interpreted him, interpreted him to be based on how, uh, how they read their book, his book, they meet him and they're like, wait a minute. But I love it not only because Willem Dafoe did a great job with that role, but also because of what he said. What he said was very true. And, and 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 I admire that. Now, how he said it was wrong. All right, and, and that's what and that uh, that's what caused friction between our characters here. But I love that it was him as a force to bring that entire sequence down to reality. To reality, after having all these manipulative shots of the two of them being so happy together, knowing that later on the shoe is eventually going to have to drop. So, as a whole, is *The Fault in Our Stars* a good movie? Yes. Is it better than *Twilight*? I don't, know, I don't know why I'm comparing it to Twilight. Anything is better than Twilight. But, this is very difficult because I want to say that this is the kind of movie that guys who get dragged there to see this movie by their girlfriends are going to enjoy it too. But, to be honest, I think this is the kind of movie that because I'm very analytical about, about movies, I was able to find things in it that made me look at the movie and be like, this is actually kind of good. But, to those general guys who are like, I don't know, my girl wants to go see Fallen Our Stars, so I guess I'm going to go see it with them. They will manage to find enough here to look at the movie and be like, eh, it was kind of sappy, it was kind of cheesy. And I'll admit, like I said, it had its sappy and cheesy moments. But along with that, it had natural moments that felt genuine, uh, whether it be the humor or the drama or these characters finding love together. And because of that, I will say that the movie is good and better than what I was hoping it to be because when I saw that this movie was just a little over two hours I was a tad bit worried but I'm very happy to say that The Fault in Our Stars is an 8 out of 10. It's a, not a bad a movie but unless you've got a lady friend that, you're gonna go, that, that, that wants to go see the movie with you or a group of friends I will say that Hey, if you're up for this kind of material, go see it. It's not a Nicholas Sparks movie. It's not, uh, and it's nowhere near Twilight. I can tell you that much. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys thought of the Fallen Stars if you did see it, which 
based on the box office numbers is like guessing a lot of you. And after seeing the movie, did you go home and watch Breaking Bad? Let me know what you guys thought and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.